welcome everybody to Hemp Engineering's interview series, Industrial Hemp Pioneers Dreams on the Table. I'm Erin Lindley. I am a industrial hemp researcher, writer, entrepreneur, traveling the world, finding out about hemp and all the beautiful people that are, that are working in it. And I'd like to introduce you today to Henry Weaker. He is Henry Hemp Harvester. And, and we are going to um, have a lovely conversation with one of the, our pioneers who's award-winning and has been, has been fighting for hemp for a long time. So uh, Henry Weaker is the founder and sole owner of HHH Hemp Harvesting Technology. It is an electrical engineer by profession from Germany. He has 25 years experience designing, implementing, and processing solutions for the automotive, chemical, and pharmaceutical and nutrition industries. Henry was initially inspired to build the HHH Har Harvester after observing laborious and expensive process of hemp harvesting hemp fields by hand. He eventually quit his job as a programmer of PLC and DSCS in 2015 to turn to planning and the construction of, of sustainable smart home projects with hempcrete and high tech. In four, year, in four years of development, he brought the HHH 700 to, to serial maturity, which implements the patented stripping technology invented earlier as the core piece. Welcome, welcome. Nice to see you. <laughs> Thank you, Erin. Hi. Hi. So just to start out, as you know, we're all in, well, we're all pioneers here and we all tend to do this for a lot more reasons than, than people think. And so I'd like to start out with asking you, how did you first learn about hemp and what led you into the business? Well, uh, I met Hannah Gabrielva from the Czech Republic in Mexico. She was traveling in Tulum with two girlfriends and or two friends, and I just picked them up hitchhiking. And so we spent a couple of days in Tulum, and she told me about her business and her profession. I said, the first in the face, I was giggling and saying, oh, it's cool, I like uh, hemp, I like to smoke. She said, no, this is a different business. But in the end of the discussion, I decided to uh, visit her in the Czech Republic just to see hemp fields. And I also found out that there is no machinery to uh, do the business like they did. They had 25 people standing around one table and just uh, doing that move with uh, the index finger and the thumbnail to strip off those uh, Mariana or hemp flowers for the best uh, tea, uh, tea flowers. You know, the, the highest quality is made by hand. So I just saw that and asked if they were in Middle Ages and uh, she just said no. The production or the development of hemp machinery has been idling for 70 years because of the prohibition. So this this was my path into the hemp machinery, also the, the, the hemp world, because I said I, I want to be a part of it and I want to be in that business and why not have a smart idea and develop a machine that can absolutely do that move. And this is what we did finally after five years of uh, development and it was, of course, expensive and it was frustrating sometimes because it didn't work in the first place. But, uh, already in the first year I had announced this uh, technology as a patent for USA, Canada and all Europe and they just uh, accepted it. So this principle with two rollers and two chains is a patent all over the world almost or in the, in the most important places. And uh, yeah, here we go with uh, absolutely uh, game-changing machine in Mariana business right now. So it is less a hemp machine than it was supposed to be for small acreage probably, but uh, nowadays it's a Mariana machine and that eases a lot of work for, for many producers of medical Mariana and smokable. Nice. That actually leads me into my second question. When you were talking about there was essentially a 70 year gap in any of the technology that comes to harvesting. Um, what is it like working in an industry that's coming out of prohibition and what impact do you think prohibition has had on the world? The impact of the prohibition of technical or industrial Mariana is probably the worst that we have seen because Mariana has been an industrial product or hemp has been an industrial product. It has always been 
like if you remember that all stuff on uh, sail ships has been from hemp, except it was from iron or wood. But uh, the exploration of the world wouldn't have happened if there was not hemp. And it was the building crop in the 20s and 30s in USA before the prohibition. So we were well on the way to use hemp as a substantial uh, material for industry. But it was blocked out by paper, by pharmaceuticals, and also by uh, crude oil. And if we would have gone ahead with hemp, we could have replaced everything plastic that is from crude oil or from, from uh, yeah, from crude oil, could be from hemp and it would be uh, sustainable. So this is the, the hard impact. And I think it's it will be hard to go to that level and replace completely the oil industry because they, of course, are lobbying hard against us. But it is a way, and we already do that with uh, 3D printing, for example, or replacing uh, plastic uh, foils with uh, hemp materials. So, yeah, one of the worst things that could happen to the world was to prohibit hemp as an industrial uh, factor. Absolutely. Um, bringing that in to how do you think uh, hemp will now com will, will contribute now to a new sustainable economy, circular economies? Where do you see hemp going in the future? It's hard to answer this question because I, of course, see it as a, a central factor. But on the other hand, I see the acreages, especially, for example, in Germany, we have 5,000 hectares of hemp but we have 6 million for grains. So uh, in comparison, our market is too small to make an impact. And uh, also the industry, these are niche products that we have already. It's growing a little, but I cannot tell how long it will take to come to an industrial scale. And if uh, one story is told that some people ask that the owner of a paper manufacturer or a, a paper company, if he wouldn't do hemp paper. So everybody is saying hemp paper would uh, save a lot of trees and less impact. So he said, how much can you deliver? And he said, maybe a truck per week. And he said, I need a train per day to establish my, uh, my, my fabrication of hemp paper. So these are the relations. We are too slow and too uh, low in fabrication or in production of uh, hemp material to feed an industry. And on the other hand, uh, we don't have developed the markets so far. So there's a huge uh, effort in public relations and in advertisement necessary to uh, put hemp into that position to be a main factor in the industry. Yeah, it's interesting. I've always said it's like there's no lack of people who want to grow it. There's no lack of people who want to buy it. The middle part with the processing is the part that we're missing. And that's where we need to see the innovation come up, like innovators like yourself that are coming up and and filling that gap and that need because, you know, everybody wants hemp toilet paper. It's just a matter of us figuring out how to fill fill in those gaps. Absolutely. And we are entering an existing competition with highly uh, optimized processes and industrial structures. And of course, they don't want to give up the profit. So we are entering a fight into established, uh, into an established situation. This is our mm -hmm. So <clears throat> Just as we come to an end, I just want you to tell um, our audience a little bit more about your project and what you're doing right now and um, what you're what you're continuing to do for this industry. Yeah, my main project is uh, a harvesting machine for hemp. It was initially thought to replace that uh, manual move of index finger and thumbnail to remove the flowers and the machine is now ready to uh, run over a field of industrial hemp and just uh, do in a second what a group of people does in, in an hour. So the comparisons to of, of the replacement of uh, stuff is enormous. So what 
a group of 20 persons has done in two days, uh, we do the machine now in three hours of two persons. So this is the relation. And uh, on the other hand, the machine is usable for uh, cannabis and marijuana. So we have been trying or we have been working in a semi-stationary process. So some guys just pre-cut the, the plants, like bushy plants, as small Christmas trees. And then you take branch by branch and just feed the machine with those branches. And it's also like 50 to 100 times faster than uh, the competition had been before. Plus you do it on the field and have no extra waste handling. And the shortest way is from uh, field to drying or to the trimmers. trimmers. And as I said, it was initially planned to be a hemp machine. So we sold, sold uh, two hectares of hemp two days ago. And I want to do a personal home project here in my place. And this is also a hard history or story for me to uh, build houses with hemp. Very important. And uh, housing or building of houses is a big polluter in the world. And we want to replace all that concrete and also that uh, plastics that are built into our homes that is only waste and has not the great effect that it's supposed to be. Absolutely. I think hempcrete and anybody who gets into hemp, they get into it for, for very different reasons. And they always tend to settle on fiber and going, this is really where it's going to be. And when you walk into a hempcrete home, you just, you feel healthier. You know, you feel like it's, it's a breathing, it's living, it's where we're supposed to live, you know, Absolutely. as opposed to these artificial plastics and these chemicals that we've been living in. I mean, health starts within the home and that's definitely a passion of mine. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thank well, thank you so much. Um, it's so nice to find people who are who are truly pioneers and understand the impact that this is going to have on the world. And I re really appreciate it. Uh, I would really appreciate having further conversations with you as we kind of expand what we're doing here and we, you know, change change the world with hemp. So thank Perfectly. you. Thank you for having me. Thanks. So, thank you too. <laughs> See you next time. Yeah, next time, yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely.